Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. We are just about to get started, so I can see lots of people already entering the webinar. So we'll give it another 30 seconds just to let everyone connect. Um, in the meantime, yeah, thank you so much for joining. My name is Helen Muzzard. I'm the CMO of IB Europe, and we are delighted to have you here this afternoon for a special CMP TCF 2.2 webinar. So let me just get the screen up and running so that you can see the programme of events this afternoon. OK, hopefully everyone can see my screen. Amazing. OK, so as mentioned, um, for today's webinar, we will be giving a um, an opportunity for some of our TCF registered CMPs to showcase uh, and give a demonstration of the CMP user interface for TCF 2.2. So um, a big thank you for uh, Young Winkler from Concept Manager who's joining us. We've got Josephine Fenwick also from SourcePoint, and then we've got Ashdeep Sood who will be joining us from One Trust, and they will all be given a presentation. Before that, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Gosha, who will give a run through of the agenda, and then she will lead into giving some updates on some of the changes that we've seen um, under TCF 2.2 this year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Helen, for this introduction. And thank you, uh, everyone who has decided to join us today. And also, once again, to our speakers uh, for your time, guys. Uh, so to start with the agenda, uh, at the beginning, just a short reminder about the deadline. Uh, later on, uh, we'll just uh, talk a bit about the summary of the the most important changes for the CMP UIs uh, in accordance with the new TCF policies uh, version 2.2. Uh, later on, we will ask our, our speakers to present the um, new CMP UIs uh, that are in compliance with the new uh, TCF policy requirements. And at the very end of this webinar, there is going to be Q and A session. Uh, that so, please, if you have any questions, feel free to. Uh, put them on the chat and we'll try to answer um, answer them later. So may I please the next slide? Okay, so uh, we have decided in the end to uh, extend the deadline to implement the TCF um, version 2.2 changes as a result of the feedback uh, received from the market that the TCF participants uh, needed more time to uh, implement everything. Uh, please note that after the new deadline, uh, this is uh, created before under TCF version 2.1 are still valid, but it won't be possible after this date to create um, TC strings under version 2.1. All the new TC strings must be uh, created under version 2.2. Also, there is a new uh, global vendor list available, uh, as well as the translations. Uh, to improve your current CMP UIs. Um, may I please the next slide? Okay, so just a short summary before we give the floor to the panelists uh, regarding the new um, new changes. Uh, the first one is the update, updated standard text of the TCF policies. We have decided to implement uh, some changes in order to make the policies more understandable and transparent to the end users. The names of the TCF purposes and features have changed, uh, as well as we have decided to remove legal text and replace it by the improved uh, user-friendly text with the illustrations that shows the, uh, the examples based on the real use cases, how TCF purposes are used by the TCF participants. Uh, the second change is the new requirement about the disclosure of the number of vendors uh, in the first layer and in the secondary layer of the CMP UI. The first layer needs uh, to show the total number of, of vendors that are looking, uh, that are seeking consent. Uh, the secondary layer should show the number of vendors on the per, per purpose basis. Uh, may I please next slide? Um, yes, uh, the next one, now CMP UI uh, needs to contain more information about vendors. And right now we ask vendors to either 
uh, update their registration information or when they register to just provide us with uh, more information that are going to be um, later on disclosed in the CMP UI to the end users. Uh, right now, it is obligatory to disclose the categories of data uh, collected by vendors, uh, retention periods on a per person basis, uh, and also, if applicable, if there are vendors that are using um, legitimate interest, uh, the link to the legitimate interest at stake explanation, for example, a bookmark in the vendor's privacy, privacy policy. Uh, we also have decided to improve the policy regarding the withdrawal of consent. Uh, right now, the policy says that the withdrawal of consent must be uh, through an easy, be, is, <laughs> easily accessible link or a call to action uh, in order to allow users to manage their consent uh, in an easy way. And uh, please note that if you provide the user ability to uh, give consent with the consent to all, then after the um, resurfacing of the same PUI, it should be uh, as easy as it was given. So if there's consent to all, uh, with the withdrawal, should be also withdrawn to all. So right now, that's all from our side. Uh, we would like to ask uh, right now our panelists to present their uh, CMPOS, how they have decided to implement the changes uh, in accordance with the TCF version 2.2. So I think the first was Jan, I think so. Yep, I can start. Um, if I find the right button here. Uh, this way. So now you should see my screen, right? Yep. Okay. Then um, yeah, just quick words about Consent Manager. Consent Manager is a is a CMP or in simple terms a cookie banner. We have uh, around thirty thousand clients worldwide. Uh, we've integrated a lot of tools to another uh, two hundred fifty thousand uh, two two thousand five hundred. Sorry, uh, we support a lot of languages around thirty, and we have a uh, holistic uh, approach, meaning uh, we want to have the same experience in all devices, all technologies with all the features that we offer, meaning it shouldn't matter if you're uh, serving on the web or if you're using an app or if you're on the TV, you should have the same experience. We support a lot of um, standards like the ABTCF Canada, uh, the new GPP, uh, and then we have a lot of features that are um, you know, on top of this normal, let's say normal CMP um, uh, functionalities. On the right, you see some some of our clients. Um, what makes us unique is very brief, simple words. Uh, we try to achieve the best compliance. Um, for example, we have some auto blocking features that makes it easy for you to actually block uh, vendors when they when they don't have consent. Uh, we have a lot of vendor details even before TCF uh, 2.2. We already had a lot of information about all the vendors in there, um, and also we only focus on European. Um, servers, we don't use US cloud servers, for example, we try to be a bit more compliant. And in order to help you with the compliance, we try to have the best uh, crawler, um, basically to stay compliant. Um, the crawler will go on your website, check the website and tell you, you know, what's happening there. If it sees cookies um, without consent, for example. Um, and then in order to, you know, to ha help you on your business side, we also try to give you the best results by fully customizing the designs or giving you live reports or nice neat features like A-B testing and machine learning in order to optimize your designs and, and try to get the best out of the results. That's just a quick word about us. Um, then just how the TCF would work. I just collected some screenshots from our system for you. It's At the end, it's really simple. Um, you register at consumermanager.net, um, you get an account, uh, you log in, you create a CMP. That's the first thing. A CMP is basically the where you would put all your, your generic uh, settings, like uh, you give it a name, the, the privacy URL, and uh, maybe you upload a logo. Um, if Since we are talking about TCF, you would want to enable the TCF. Um, in addition to TCF, you can also enable other uh, uh, standards like GPP or uh, US privacy, um, you can target them. So you can say, okay, TCF Europe should only apply in Europe while um, GPP with, with uh, US California should only f uh, apply in California and Canada, the PEPIDA law should only apply in Canada, for example. Um, once you have set up uh, these settings, you usually enable the purposes that you want to use. 
uh, the the usual recommendation from a let's say a publisher perspective would be to choose as many as possible purposes so that your vendors can use them you will also get a, an overview from the system which which purposes are actually used by your vendors um, so that you can enable and disable purposes as you want you can also combine them with stacks in order to make this um, the appearance a bit nicer um, once you have this then you will put the vendors your vendor list together um, either you just use our crawler so the crawler goes on your website and will tell you okay there is, I don't know, Google and uh, Xander on your website, or you search for the vendors manually and then import them however you want. Um, there's a lot of other features that you can do. For example, you can set the legal basis for the vendors, or you can uh, uh, add a description, change some logic, etc. But at the end, you will have your vendor list. And once you have this, you get a code, right? Uh, uh, HTML code for your website or for apps, we have SDKs or for certain plugins for, for CMS and shop systems. Uh, we can also work with AMP or with TV systems, various, various systems that you can uh, use us for. Um, it's pretty, pretty simple. As I said before, it's, it's, we have some auto blocking, so it's really just co um, copy and paste. Um, and then it's running. Um, also what you want might wanna do is change your design. We have predefined designs in there so that you can basically just start right now and, and just reconfigure them. Um, it's pretty easy to update your designs. You just see this in the, in the, uh, in the preview, just click on, let's say the button or the, the headline or whatever you want to change. And then on the left side, you will see the, the, the settings for this thing and you can live see the changes that you do. Um, also important that all this changes, all the settings that you do, um, you don't need to go back to the to the codes basically, and you know change the design and change the codes again. But the the codes will always stay the same, right? So you put the codes on the page, and you can always go back into our system and change the settings, and and uh, you don't need to change the codes again. Um, so it's easy uh, for you to use. Um, and then how it looks at the end, um, I just took two screenshots of our actually the the, the design that we are using on our own website. Um, one on the left is with TCF 2.1 and the other one is 2.2. So in our system, you can actually currently, you can still choose which version you want to use, um, the older or the new. Um, the differences are at least on the first layer, very, very minimal since we already had before the, the amount of vendors already in the text. Um, the actual change here is really just the, 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 uh, the text of the purpose, or, or in this case, the text of the stack is a bit, a bit different. Um, so it wouldn't change so much if you if you're upgrading from TCF 2.1 to 2.2. On the second layer, if you click on customize your choice, um, you will have the, the the purposes again or the stacks again uh, for each stack and for each purpose you will have the vendor list. Um, and again, there is not so much change um, besides what what Gosha before said. Uh, the description of the purposes is a bit. Um, more user friendly. You don't have this legal text uh, anymore. You have a, an, an explanation, a, a use, a use case, so to say. Um, you have the, a number of vendors also there, and also when you click on the question mark icon for 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 a vendor, you will get more details about the, the individual vendor. I'm using Google advertising products here in this example. Um, again, the difference between TCF 2.1 and 2.2 is is fairly minimal. Uh, on the right side, you see a bit more, um, this, this categories of process data is a bit more. Um, and if you scroll down a bit, then you also have uh, retention periods and some more details about cookies, et cetera. So it becomes a bit more information about the vendor, but the overall look and feel is is still the same. So it is no, uh, let's say, big design change coming coming towards you. It's more something like under the hood. And that's it from, from our side. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Anne, a lot uh, for that. Uh, the next one, it was Josephine, I think. I have to unmute myself, of course. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, thanks very much, uh, Ivy Europe, for this opportunity to show uh, what we're doing for uh, 2.2. Um, and uh, also um, thanks to, to Concept Manager, it was really cool to see what you guys are doing. Um, so just to give a bit of background, um, so I, uh, I'm i Josie, I am the Client Services Director 
in the UK. Uh, I've been at SourcePoint now for three and a half years uh, and I've helped uh, <laughs> over 200 different sites of implement um, TCF 2.1. Uh, and I was here when we did the, the migration from V1 to V2 back in 2020. Um, I've been working with uh, a lot of publishers, especially premium publishers in the UK um, over the past couple of years and also uh, around the world uh, in the US and uh, APAC. Uh, and we've also got teams throughout sort of Berlin and the US to sort of cover the European uh, and US market. Um, we've also been working for the past few years uh, with our clients to help them curate their CMP vendor list um, using our diagnosed scanning software. Um, so this just helps them understand what kind of technology is on site uh, and then to sort of uh, try and curate the vendor list down so they're not using the full list and they're sort of um, providing users with uh, a more meaningful consent journey. Um, plus, we're also very proud that we were um, with three years of a finalist for the Best Media Technology Partner at the UK AOP Awards uh, and were um, honourably mentioned this year. Cool. So we, um, we've we approached uh, TCFB 2.2 in a couple of different ways. Um, we wanted to give our clients a lot of control over both the migration uh, their vendor lists uh, and how um, they approach all of the different regulations coming online around the world. Uh, so the first is uh, meaningful consent, which is obviously one of the main changes um, mentioned uh, in 4.2.2 and that um, users need to be able to give meaningful consent to the numbers of vendors that clients and publishers use within their vendor lists. So we've been working to reduce um, the list down without impacting revenue. Uh, the second is that our platform has given quite a lot of control to our clients in regards to their vendor list. So they, they can add and remove vendors uh, as they need. Uh, and they can also set um, consent at different purpose levels as well. And then lastly, um, with, we're also uh, adding um, in the chance to be a little bit more strategic in how we approach the different data regulations that are coming online. So um, we've also uh, given our clients the ability to select the GAR applies for the regions that matter to them, uh, that could just be the EEA, uh, it could be Japan, Brazil, the US, Canada, etc. So our approach to TCFB 2.2 has been pretty proactive. Um, we've been working with our clients throughout Europe uh, to help strategize uh, the, across their different, my, the different migration plans. The deadline of November 20th, we know is a really busy time of year, uh, especially for publishers or, or sites with online advertising. Uh, it's the same week as Black Friday. Um, so we're making sort of a concerted effort to try and get all of our clients migrated uh, towards, or at least by the end of October, um, so that they can run whatever reconsents or um, new campaigns that they need so that their users are consented in time for sort of the busy season. Um, so our team uh, are pretty on hand to support any issues and as we go through the different migration stages, we'll also um, be on call for um, sort of uh, hot fixes and things. Um, our approach to uh, the the tech side of the 2.2 migration. So um, as Jan sort of explained for content manager, we also have uh, a JavaScript script, which goes on page. Um, we aren't going to, um, we don't require any script changes when uh, clients migrate from 2.1 to 2.2. All of that migration is handled within the portal. Um, for our app environments, there will be a small uh, app update so that our apps can ingest the new 2.2 consent strings, but we'll be supporting the different versions of our SDK, so 5, 6, and 7. Um, but basically, we've tried to design our approach to be as um, less intrusive as possible to our clients because uh, we know how hard it is to get sort of roadmap changes in. Um, now, I'm going to give sort of a, a live demo of uh, our portal. Um, so that you guys can see the changes that we've made um, specifically. Now, I know, um, you know, not everyone on the call has seen SourcePoint before, so I'll sort of give a bit of an example, like a bit of a, a demo of the portal itself. So um, SourcePoint, we're primarily CMP privacy focused. We've got three main products, so Dialogue CMP, um, which is in place uh, in, across a lot of publishers and clients throughout the UK and Europe, and then also um, CCPA and the US. And then we have a diagnose scanning tool, which scans the sites to look for um, third party technology for both compliance risk, but also to understand sort of the vendor behavior on site. Uh, and then we have a third product called Privacy Lens. And um, I'm just gonna show you how we manage our vendor list, then also how we create the messages uh, in preparation for 2.2. So I've created this um, example list for sourcepoint.com. Um, you can see first of all that our list of vendors are on the left-hand side. 
the ones with the orange dot are IAB vendors, and then we've got additional uh, libraries like um, Google ATP, and then we also have a custom vendor library as well. And then of course you can see all of the main uh, IAB purposes at the top with their corresponding um, purpose IDs. Uh, as Gracia showed at the beginning with the um, different changes, a lot of it is about the number of vendors that are um, both going to be in the whole vendor list, but also at a purpose level. So we've added in total numbers um, uh, at different purposes. And then of course we've added in the new uh, purpose 11. Um, so purpose 11 is the use of limited data and select content. So this one is the new one being added for 2.2. And as you can see, when you click into the different purpose, you can see the new user-friendly text that's been mentioned, which is now going to replace the different uh, legal description. And then we also have the two new illustrations um, so we've added a, a couple of additional levels of control for our clients uh, for illustration so they can choose whether to use these um, specifically or create their own uh, custom illustrations uh, with a couple of warnings that if they do change uh, or remove some of the illustrations, then um, this will be indicated to downstream vendors. Um, but it gives a little bit more choice to clients, especially if they use these purposes in different ways. Cool. We've also added in uh, a couple of additional Sort of notices to help clients manage the, the size of their vendor list. So if clients are adding in vendors, we've got this new notification which basically says, you know, just be careful about how many you add in as an unjustifiably large number of vendors can impact the user's ability to make an informed choice and it can increase legal risk for publishers and clients. And last but not least, we've added in sort of a, a notification area where you can see the three main updates that are occurring, occurring with TCF. So the first is um, obviously the change to the legal descriptions, moving to user-friendly text plus the illustrations. Update number two is the addition of purpose 11. And then update number three is the removal of legitimate interest for purposes three, four, five, and six, which you can see here um, as you scroll down that each of these vendors, which have the individual con the control for the different purposes, none of them have legitimate interest. So the um, way our clients will be migrating from 2.1 to 2.2 is actually really simple. All they have to do is save their vendor list. This is the action that moves them from the version one framework, 2.1 framework, sorry, to 2.2. Um, but of course they also have to make changes to their um, message as well. So I've also created uh, an example message, if I can just get to it, there we go. Um, which uh, just also shows sort of the changes we've made. So again, for those uh, of you who aren't familiar with the source point portal, um, we have a uh, an area where we can create and customize messages, um, which is called our message builder. Um, you'll see on a couple of websites that um, none of our messages sort of look the same. They're all based on our own client's designs uh, and the portal gives them quite a lot of flexibility with this. Um, so the first uh, is our first layer message. Again, I've created something that is, let me have a little glass in a second, refresh my page. Um, so what I've created is again, just a sample message for sourcepoint.com. Which one has disappeared on me? Cool, that's great. Um, so, okay, so I'll just start from scratch here. Um, so basically we have uh, a couple of different um, elements that we can add. So let's, for example, let's say I've added in a text Again, not working for me. I'm hoping the team aren't doing an auto update. Oh, it's not showing. All right. So, okay, so I can explain. Um, so we have a, a vendor count widget, which we will add into the content. So clients will be able to add it in wherever they need within the paragraph. This vendor count widget is dynamic. So it pulls in the specific number of vendors and you can choose whether to list all vendors or just those from the IAB. Um, again, this, this number will change based on any changes you make to the vendor list itself. Um, and then you also won't be able to save the message unless that vendor count widget is in place. Uh, in addition, we have a privacy check which lists all of the requirements that you need to be TCF compliant. I could show that at least, yeah. So these are all of the lists of the, um, all of the requirements for TCF uh, and we've added in now a new an additional one for vendor count. So once you've added that in, you can tick that off and therefore you know you've got a fully compliant 2.2 message. Um, we also have our privacy manager, uh, hopefully this on load, yep, um, which also has the changes from the vendor list. Um, so as you can see, we've got the different purposes. Under each of the purposes, we have the new uh, user-friendly text and the illustration, plus the number of vendors uh, per purpose, uh, split between user consent and legitimate interest. 
And then within the site vendors tab, we also have the number of vendors here under user consent and ally. And then under each vendor, you'll be able to see all of the different purposes and the different categories of the data that's collected. And all of this information is provided by um, the vendor list once you update. So it basically, um, basically dynamically changes the, the privacy manager as soon as you save that list. Um, I wish I could show you the first layer because I the, the design I did, I thought it was pretty good. Um, but yeah, that, that pretty much sums it up. Um, we're really excited to sort of work with all of our clients to get everyone moved over. We know it's going to be a, quite a tricky period um, as we move into the Q4 because uh, we know it's a really busy time of year for advertising. Um, yeah, and our team are just going to be on hand and we'll work pretty closely with everyone to make sure their migrations go smoothly. Um, and with that, I will stop sharing. Okay, thank you very much, Josephine. Uh, now, uh, please, Arjdeep, can you present your uh, presentation? Of course. Uh, let me take over screen share here. Give me one quick second. Can you see my screen come through? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Oh, okay. Today is one of the finest experiences I can have. <laughs> Let's get started. Uh, okay. One more time. Any luck this time around? Awesome. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Arshdeep Sood, and I'm a senior solutions engineer with the OneTrust team. Uh, I'm joined today by uh, my colleague here from the product team, Shay, he's uh, really here to address any specific technical questions that you might have as we go through the demonstration today. Uh, what I really want to focus on is uh, first of setting the stage and who OneTrust is and uh, what are we provide as a CMP solution. Uh, we go through the entire array of uh, users showing up at your door, be it a website, a CTV application or a mobile application, giving you consent as this anonymous user, and then maybe building a direct relationship with you through first party data capture. So end to end through your customer life cycle, we can help you with consent collection and management. And we do support uh, different regions, different regulations. We have invested a lot from an R&D perspective to ensure that you're well prepared for anything that's up and coming and you're able, able to QA it for yourselves before you go live with something as critical as consent collection, notice and disclosure. And we're uh, really excited to be part of these collaborations and organizations with IAB as they're pioneering, standardizing such experiences uh, for users on websites and building trust with the end user and business. Uh, now, when we're thinking about how OneTrust would support you with this initiative of TCF version 2.2, uh, we have already discussed the pieces that have changed. So I'll dive right into what it looks like for an end user to show up on your site or different channels like mobile or CTV to give you that consent and how do you collect it? So the first thing here you are seeing is uh, one of our internal sites here, OT Kicks. I'm personally a big uh, shoe fan, so uh, loved it when we came up with this. What we have here is a user just showing up on the page. It can be geo-targeted for your different regions and geographies, be it siloed out within the EU or across the globe. If you're a global organization or looking to scale to that level, uh, we can ensure you're targeting the right banner experience to that audience. And it encapsulates different pieces that have been called out by these changes with you to like highlighting how many partners or vendors are really leveraging the data that's being processed on the site once you have form, informed them with the consent. Uh, these are all dynamic variables. So as you evolve as a business and change the set of partners you're working with or vendors you're working with, these variables will automatically be updated. Uh, we do also provide you with a list of all the partners or vendors that you have listed and collated along with direct links to their privacy policies, their interest claims, and then at that preference center level, which is where we start talking about special purposes or the list of purposes in hand, or even something that's more first party for you and you're dropping it for your own business requirements, you can really work through those on the site here, get that consent for them across those categorizations. But specific to the uh, TCF 2.2 requirements, it's important we highlight exactly how many vendors 
are collecting consent for that unique purpose. And in alignment with that, really discuss which vendors are these. So not all vendors are looking for all forms of consent. So really discussing those subsets, highlighting which vendors are involved in that, and even discussing any custom illustrations or illustrations provided by IAB as part of the design that we give you out of the box. So the user can really dive into your notice and disclosure, understand what you're trying to communicate, and uh, really in alignment with how all these other CMPs are thinking, we want to be supporting the ability to surface those illustrations that either IAB has provided or you can customize them for your requirements. Now, if you have audience members that are more fluent in certain languages and you'd like to translate these banners over to that, or maybe you have websites that are pre-translated to those experiences, maybe French, German, Spanish, Portuguese, and many more, we do have out-of-the-box translations for those banners, and then you are more than welcome to customize them further to your rebuild standing and requirements. Now, websites, super popular, but personally, what I saw is in the past about two years, especially with the pandemic, the use of smart devices, be it your smart TV or your smartphone, has incrementally increased. So say we start talking about a CTV application that you might be supporting. When a user gets to your app, the first thing you would want to show is a banner to collect that consent and start firing those tags or speaking to the vendors and really enabling that personalized journey that we all want our customers to have. So again, discussing the exact same thing. How many vendors are we working on or working with? Being able to accept all, reject all. And then if we dive into those purposes, I can understand my list. I can understand, again, those specific set of different purposes that IAB has set out. And we do give you the ability to opt in those, opt to those, see a list, a shortened out list of those vendors. But then again, the illustrations, we have the ability to redirect the user if they want to see it in a more physical space, like on a laptop or, you know, QR, grab it, see it on their phone. And if you want to customize it here within the UI of Pinterest, you could also do that. Now, these options, again, are not limited to just CTV. If we are looking at the mobile application world, I'm going to pull up a sample for that too. So we want to make sure that when somebody is coming in from a mobile app, first thing, let's form trust. Let's bring consent in. I can show them the banner get my list of partners, uh, starts with 152 media, goes all the way to all the ones I might have. I can also, maybe as a business uh, end consumer, I want to know who all are really working and collecting my geolocation data. I can filter it down to the ones that are specifically doing that. So it's not just built for your business to have notice, disclosure, and compliance, but also to ensure that an end user who is in today's time, super or hyper privacy conscious and aware has the ability to see that you have disclosed everything that's important and understand you're a business to be trusted. Uh, the same exact experience applies in here, where if I want to manage my trackers, SDKs, or even IAB purposes, I can do it with the uh, mobile app UI. So it's very native, very supported there. And many a times when I'm having these conversations with customers, they would come up and ask me that, hey, when we think of omni-channel strategy, it's beyond just anonymous user. I might have a user who's logged in. I'm not showing them the same banner so many times. They have seen it, they understand, and they want to sync those choices across the board. And OneTris does support you with the ability to have an authenticated consent experience. So if this is a returning user, they always have the power to update their choice but at the same time, don't have to go through that consent fatigue to see that same banner prompt again and again, unless you as a business choose to do so. Irrespective, we've really worked to make sure that the end user experience is as seamless and easy as possible, but it is only a great game when it's easy for you to implement as well. So very much in alignment with the key strategies uh, our different panelists have here, when we think about configuration, we do have different templates that you can get started with. If you're a customer today and you already have a TCF 2.0 banner, I would suggest that go in, just select the banner that you want to work with, 
we'll give you a prompt saying, hey, by 20th of November, we need to make these updates. If you're proactive, you have the time, go ahead and just hit that update button and all your settings would port over. But if you are starting out fresh or you want to make maybe a new template altogether, in that case, I suggest let's grab our 2.2 banner, accept the terms and conditions. So you're very clear on exactly what you're signing up for. And as you go through this process, you can go ahead and create that new template in here. Now, from a design perspective, we saw, can I update the vendor list? Our team said it's dynamic. How does that really work? We have a variable in here. So even if you decide to change the text that goes around it, that dynamicity still exists and you can manage and maintain that. You can customize the way the banner looks, feels, the color scheme, the design. And when you get into those granular details, like we were discussing, the ability to have custom illustrations that is really tied to your own business, your audience, your field of operations, you can come into the platform and customize those in here. So if I pull one of my designs, I can come in, I can say I'd like to manage my preference center, advanced in pigs, and I, certainly not a French speaker, so I'm gonna switch back over to English. I can customize my language and settings, but at the same time, for those custom illustrations, I can go in, say I'd like to amend these changes, and go ahead and change the example that I have. So my custom example. Maybe I just want to use that. But as we all know, it's important if you have one or more, then you would want to keep hold of one of those IAB defaults as a benchmark. In that case, even if you try to change these settings, you really won't be able to save it. This is us not only notifying you, but also making sure that if there's a mandate you are following through. And say you rethink your strategy and you realize my custom example or custom example number two, three are not the ones we really like. We just want to go back to what IB has suggested. They've certainly put a lot of thought into it. You can just revert it back to what it originally was. And as you go through these experiences, there's full version control, full support for different languages and experiences. And this design can evolve across your mobile applications. So you can design and update these here in those different languages. And that exact same thing applies to your CTV apps. So you are really thinking and managing everything from one centralized location and the legal compliance team can collaborate with the marketing team, the design team, and really make wonders happen as you build this trust experience. Now, all is great, but if you want to understand your vendors better, we do have the GBL within the OneTrust platform. You can manage your own vendor list as well. And all the key requirements, like a list of uh, what the data retention scheme is, what data declarations do we have, the details around those data declarations, maybe each purpose or each cookie that this vendor deploys has a different retention policy. We not only collect and have that data, but we also help you expose that upfront to the end user. And over time, as you see activity happen, when you go live with these experiences, nothing's better than getting keen analytics to make your business decisions, maybe A-B test and improve these experiences over time. So we'll give you metrics around by the category, how are you performing? What are you seeing in surges, opt-ins versus opt-outs? You can do a, a region-based analysis if you'd like. You can also go ahead and dive deeper into devices. Are, am I seeing more people make changes on a mobile app versus a website? Where is my traffic really coming from? And leverage these data points as you start thinking about your next strategy to build trust and even broader scheme. Think of your MarTech stack, data clean rooms as you go to the back end of things and try to improve the way you work with your audiences. And to that same effect, if uh, there is an identifier, like I mentioned, authenticated consent, syncing your choices across the board. If you're looking to have a background report of was there consent that happened for an identified specific user, you pick your identifier and we can give you a report for those consent records. And over time, we can help you build consumer profiles to that identifier, where now I can see over time this user's come in, 
And this person has changed their choices over 142 times for these trackers. And it doesn't, doesn't limit to that. If I, this is a known user, I might have a marketing engagement. I might email communications or if you're a mobile app and you like to send them uh, great offers and deals and reward programs, you can also manage and maintain those consents. So it's not just about the first interface that you build consent and trust at, but it's the long-term journey that we want to work with you on. So that actually wrap, wraps up most of the pieces I wanted to touch on. I'll uh, quickly summarize the key items that I uh, tried to portray in the short 10 minutes that I did have, love to talk for sure. Um, the first thing is if you're a current customer, you can easily migrate using our migrate model. You can go ahead and customize the text that surface, but we'll still dynamically help you update the number of vendors you're working with as your websites and devices evolve. Uh, be the stacks, be the custom illustration requirements, or even surfacing vendor numbers at different layers in these experiences. We have worked through all of that. All of this is available to you today. So if you're a customer, go speak to your... Uh, actually, let me switch over to what you should be doing. So if you're a current customer, go talk to your CSM, your support team, and start working on all of these updates. Stay in tune with the IAB. They're doing great things. They're putting in the time and effort to work with you, work on timelines that will support you as businesses. So stay up to date with that. If you need any additional references, feel free to reach out to us. We have blogs and webinars, but uh, make sure you take some action and uh, work towards this uh, great effort that we all are working towards in this industry. And that wraps me up. Okay, thank you very much, Arshdeep. Thank you. Uh, so right now is the uh, Q&A session. We have some questions that have been asked uh, by the participants. Um, so to begin with, uh, how should publishers approach their TCF vendors uh, versus their non-TCF vendors? Um, so I think we've already answered in the previous um, webinars, but maybe uh, Josephine would like to um, elaborate more on this question. Sure, I can. Um, so the way that we've approached it is we've given you control. You can either list just the TCF vendors or you can choose to list all vendors, which includes Google ATP or any custom vendors. Um, obviously, this depends how many vendors you have in your vendor list and um, sort of the, the strategy that you've put around brand um, and disclosing that kind of number to your users. Um, so uh, the second part of the question is, um, should we, should we give the users option to opt in slash opt out or should we present the info without option to control? Ideally, you would list all of the vendors that you have um, on your site in your CMP to give that granular consent to users, whether or not they are part of the TCF or Google AP, ATP or custom vendors. Um, but I think that's more in line with GDPR and e-privacy than it is um, specifically to the TCF. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Josephine. Yeah, the idea is like the number of vendors uh, is required by the TCF policy when it comes to the TCF vendors. But when you think about the GDPR or other privacy regulations and the transpar transparency uh, principle, then you should think if it's not just um, wise to uh, disclose the total number of vendors, even if you have also the vendors that are not the part of uh, TCF. But it's up to the publisher to decide how um, how it wants to uh, manage that. Okay, the second one. Uh, can publishers include both the terms of service and privacy policy links, uh, the CMPY, in order to try to avoid having too many pop-ups at the app uh, first open? So maybe Jan? Um, yeah, sure. So from a design perspective, sure, you can um, design the concept layer however you want, uh, add more text, add more links, uh, add more whatever graphics if you want. Uh, at the end, uh, the, the legal question, uh, are you allowed to combine certain things or how can you present choices without making it uh, too easy? I don't want to say too easy, but uh, too simple. Um, while not making it too complicated. So the, the fine line in between is, will be the problem. But from a technical per perspective, uh, I think in all of the CMPs that are present here, you can fully customize your consent layer and, and 
put in in there whatever you want yeah uh, thank you asian underlined yeah from the legal point of view it is like really important to uh, to have this visible differentiation between when the user gives consent and between the terms of service and the privacy policy. So again, it's more the question how to want to present, but re just remember that according to the TCF policy, the CMPUI needs to be differentiated from the privacy policies of term of services. Okay, that is done. Uh, can you share the four points that Kosha showed before again? Uh, Helen, can you present maybe? Uh, just in case we can also afterwards upload the presentation from the IAB uh, site to our website. So uh, the um, slides will be there. Yeah, we'll, we'll send the slides and the recording. They're going to be up on our website tomorrow. Um, for the meantime, I'll put it in the chat box rather than me going through it so you can crack through on through the questions. Okay, thank you, Helen. Uh, how can we get access to trial version of your CMP platform? Okay, so... <laughs> Then I think I will just like ask you guys to uh, to explain. So right now maybe we'll start from with Arjdeep. Thank you for the question. Uh, certainly, if you're looking to test this out, one I personally love to work with customers directly for running these tests and getting confident with what you would like to do and discuss best practices. So I would recommend reaching out to the OneTrust team. Uh, you can hit us with a message. Uh, you can reach out to me directly on LinkedIn if you'd like, and I can set uh, set up a conversation there. Or you can we can help find a sales representative that can directly work with you as an executive and make sure that you're uh, you're supported with that trial. Well, we, we certainly also encourage you to go ahead, test it out, feel confident before you onboard. Good. So now, uh, maybe Josephine. Sure, yeah, um, same principle, uh, best to just get in touch. Um, uh, yeah, our, our CMP is very sort of customizable and, and we'd love to talk through sort of the challenges that you're facing and how we can approach those. So yeah, um, get in touch either um, marketing at sourcepoint.com or follow us on LinkedIn. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, Jan, please. Yeah, um, www.conceptmanager.net and then uh, there's a right button on the a big button on the right top um, and just try it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next one, will the vendor account always include all custom vendors? So it was, I think, the first question. Uh, so again, it's up to the publisher, basically, if you want to include the non-TCF vendors in your total number of vendors. And uh, with this question, really elaborate on that in our uh, frequent ask question document. So please also check our website regarding this uh, This one. Okay, uh, will the vendor account uh, be made available via uh, an API for custom first layer message messages? Uh, okay, guys, so maybe with this one, I will just um, ask how you will consolidate the number of vendors in your uh, UIs and how publisher can check this number when they configure the CMPs. So um, again, I think we can start with Arshdeep then. I lost the unmute button. Yeah, yeah. so uh, <laughs> we do maintain the vendor list in there and uh, it kind of ties to the question that was also previously asked. If you have your own set of vendors that you work with that's beyond the GVL, if you have a Google ATP list or any others, you can generate all of that into a singular inventory within OneTrust and evaluate those and we can help you work through that. Uh, these vendor information points are available with all the details out of the box and you can also add your own data points to this. And we programmatically calculate the IAB vendor for the specs so you can easily see based on the specs that are there how many vendors are associated to that specific purpose. And if that changes for you, or you decide to make changes such that a vendor does not have that information via consent, we will make that information also available upfront and then update the TTC strings accordingly for you. Okay, thanks, Josephine. Cool. So yeah, our, our platform. Um, I, I actually I'd have to understand what you mean by custom first layer messages. Um, I guess our platform has been designed so that if you create a TCF message, then you can have, um, that vendor account widget, which is an API in itself. Um, I'd probably have to speak to our product team to understand. Um, and also to yourself to understand the use case for this. Um, but I'm sure it's not that hard. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, thanks, Jan. Yeah, yeah I just continue there, yeah. Uh, so in our case, we have this, if you have a text on the first layer where it says we and our 25 partners, uh, the number would just be a, like a macro, so some some characters, and the system would automatically put in the the right data there. Um, so you can always update your vendor list, and the text will stay in sync, so to say. There's APIs for everything, but uh, from how I read the question, it's more about understanding that this text will automatically change. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Now, initially, we were told the deadline for PCF v two point two was September. 2023 and then January 2024, but today I've seen on my slide it's saying November 2023. Uh, yes, I can clarify that uh, because at the beginning, indeed, the deadline was the 30th of September 2023. But I can't remind that we said that the deadline will be January 2024. We only recently, I think at the beginning of this uh, month, uh, have decided to extend the implementation period until the 20th of November. So right now the deadline to implement all the changes is the November 20th, 2023. Uh, so 20th of November is the deadline for CMPs to support TCF 2.2. What is the deadline for publishers to actually make the switch? Uh, so the deadline is for all the participants, so uh, for vendors, CMPs, and for the publishers. So 20th of November is the um, deadline to implement the changes. Is the record again going to be shared with the attendees? So as publisher, I need to add myself into vendor list and all the other downstream vendors uh, to the list. Uh, what if the downstream members are not in the program? Okay. So yes, the recording will be uh, of this webinar will be on our website. But the second part of the question, I think it's again the, about the number of vendors. So we already answered that. Um, unless you guys think that someone asked about something else, but I suppose it's again about the number of vendors. Actually, I, I understand the question is, so as a publisher, I need to add myself into a vendor list. So uh, no, if you're a publisher, you don't need to yourself to add yourself into the vendor list. You're the publisher. Um, or you might process data and then you would add yourself, but not in the sense of adding yourself for the TCF, but for your own pro uh, processing that you do. And the other piece, downstream members that are not part of the GVL, um, yeah, that's, that's a problem. Um, you cannot really work with non-TCF vendors um and give them the tcf signal right so that they, they will just not understand it or might understand it but not know what to do with it um so it's always recommended to work with vendors that are registered in in the gvl um but also it's kind of the majority i would say i mean the, at least the important ones are there if your vendors are not in there then uh, have a talk to them and uh, get them registered okay thanks a lot uh, the next one is uh, directed to source point. Uh, is there a specific minimum SDK version for mobile uh, we need to be on for the full TCF version 2.2 implementation? Cool. Um, yeah, no, there's there's no specific version. We'll support any of the current SDKs that we have, so 5, 6, or 7, depending on what they're on. Um, but yeah, get in touch with your account manager and they'll be able to help. Okay, thank you. Uh, can each vendor share the recommended number of vendors a website to work with or state their methodology for devising this? Um, so here I can maybe ask uh, Jan to elaborate or Josephine, I don't know, because I saw that you wanted to answer. Just done a lot of work in this space, but Jan, I'm happy for you to answer if you'd like. Oh, ladies first. <laughs> um, so uh, there is no recommended number. Um, there's no magic number. But that um, everyone's using. Uh, I would say that the full global vendor list, all 826 partners, I think at the moment, is, is too big. Um, yeah, I, I would definitely start working towards at least below 300 as a first goal. I think the majority of our publishers have managed to get it down to between sort of 150 and 250, just to see um, what the impact's gonna be once 2.2 uh, is released over the coming months um, and the impact on their consent rates, if any. 
Um, but in addition, when they went through that process, um, they, they basically used a, a diagnose tool to understand uh, of the full global vendor list that they were using, of which vendors were, were actually triggering on site and which were adding value. And they found a, a good 500 plus who never triggered over a six month period and therefore added no value and could immediately be removed without actually any impact on the site itself or any revenue. So uh, it depends obviously on your own site, the type of partners that you have, the type of list that you're using, um, and if you're collecting any data on whether those vendors are actually triggering on site to then start that process to remove. Um, but it's a pretty intense project. I, I, I would say that it goes uh, across a couple of different teams like commercial product, privacy, et cetera, uh, but it's definitely worth starting um, because yeah, a more curated list is better for your users better for your site performance uh, and it's easier for you guys to manage. Okay, thank you. So Jan, do you want to add something? No, Josephine said everything that's that's necessary. So yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, please explain if a user already gave consent for DCF uh, 2.1, should we show the GDPD banner again after update to uh, 2.2 and 3 as consent. No, according to the TCF policies, there is no requirement to resurface again the, uh, the banner. Okay, are vendors in Google vendor list and the TCF list counted twice in the total uh, vendor count? Or could I reduce the total amount of vendors by just showing TCF vendors and move some TCF vendors over to Google? Uh, Arshdeep maybe? Yeah, so we are really here talking about two different vendor lists. When we have that dynamic programmatic updates, it will be tied to the vendors that you have decided to work with. So there, it, think of it as a, a Venn diagram. So if you have intersections, we count it as one. If you don't, it is separate. And we do that by the purpose as well. So if you use certain vendors for certain purposes and they don't work for other purposes, but they are still vendors. So your total might be at 650, but by the purpose, it could be 200, 500, 250. And we can account for that accordingly. And as your vendors evolve or change to the conversations we're having, there's no magic number to that. As, as they do go ahead and evolve, we can make sure that those programmatic updates are surfaced in the UI if you want it to be programmatic. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anyone want to add something or? I don't see. Okay. Oh, my. I mean, sorry, I would add that um, that uh, Google has said that if a vendor is both on the ATP or the Google list and also on the TCF list, then to use the TCF vendor, not the Google vendor. Their preference is that you collect consent by the TCF rather than Google. So if you have both, um, just think that TCF trumps Google ATP or custom. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, okay, the next one, originally TCF version 2.2 release and the pre-creation of US privacy string were the same date, so, uh, date September 30. And now that they have different dates, how are the CMPs handling the pre-creation of US privacy string? So maybe Jan? Yeah, so in our case, uh, clients would, uh, I mean, they can already start uh, um, uh, with GPP and all this, features that GPP bring like TCF Canada or the US states um, uh, with the September, September 30th, they would, we would basically stop with the support of US privacy. So for the clients, it doesn't really change anything in the setup in the, in the, in the way how they deal with the vendors and with the purposes, etc. It's more a, an underlaying API thing that will yeah, be de deactivated. Um, but at the moment, we are, we are uh, encouraging vendors or uh, publishers or websites to yeah basically to start using GPP because that's that's the next thing. Yeah. Okay, Josephine, Ashdeep, do you want to elaborate? Okay. Um. Yeah. So we've actually developed a fallback solution which will um, both create IAB strings, uh, sorry, US privacy strings and uh, the GPP MSPS string at the same time, um, so that there's basically no revenue risk to publishers post September 30th. So there are some vendors um, who, who don't yet support MSPS and will still use the US privacy string and some vendors who will start using the MSPS from October 1st. So um, our clients will implement both alongside each other and they'll create both strings um, until 
the NUC vendors are, are supporting the one framework. Yeah, and uh, from the one trust CM perspective, we're pretty much aligned on the timelines what IAB Tech Lab or IAB Europe set up. So we have support for GPP already. And based on the question that's being asked, I can see that you're an organization that's global. So my recommendation starting out is you are going to geotarget eventually. You would like to have an opt-out do not sell versus an opt-in GDPR IAB TCF V2. So for those different regions, the right strings can be generated. We support that out of the box. And if you are also looking to operate out of Canada and there is the IAB Canada requirements, we have support for all of those in place. So my recommendation is have a conversation, see what your strategies are today and how we or this other CMP providers can really support those granular unique use cases and maybe even geotranslate that for those regions to ensure the right strings, the right experience is being delivered. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, how can we detect the vendors who don't buy for purpose one uh, storage and access? I understand we still need to list them. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so in, in your vendor list, you will see the, the details basically for all the vendors. Um, basically, you can click on each of the purposes and you will see which vendors will, uh, this applies to, or you click on the vendor and you see the purposes. So in, in whatever direction. Um, they, I'm not sure about the background of the question because, I mean, at the end, you will still need a lot of vendors if you want to monetize, and a lot of vendors will always have a lot of combinations of purposes. Um, so it it doesn't really, there doesn't seem to be a benefit in adding or removing a, a purpose. Uh, most of our clients, they just use all the 10 purposes that, that the current TCF is giving or the 11 purposes from TCF 2.2. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, how about mandatory vendors? Do you have to include them in the counter as well? Uh, okay, personally, I'm not sure what someone meant by mandatory vendors, but maybe you guys have the idea. I think this is the first. I'm personally hearing about mandatory vendors. Um, I maybe would it's just say... a bad translation from essential. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, as for your information, Google discount at uh, ATP ACM vendor on their scheme. Ah, okay, so just for, for the information. Uh, and I think it might be our last question. Uh, should we re-ask consent in 13 months? As I know, Google can cannot use consent that is 13 months old. And in this case, they provide non-personalized ads. So before in the TCF uh, policies version 2.1, uh, there was the requirement to ask for the consent after a friend in months, but we uh, we resigned from this requirement because all the local data protection authorities has have different guidelines. So the best is just to check the local requirements uh, in this case. Okay, and Helen, do we have more time or? I think we don't have. Uh, so I think we can finish at this point. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, presence today. Thank you very much once again uh, to our speakers that present the CMP UIs and for, for your time. And the recording will be on our website um, as, a, as well as the presentation that we showed. And uh, once again, uh, if you have any questions, I suppose um, you guys would like to, like, I mean, Source Police Consent Manager, OneTrust would uh, be happy to receive any inquiries if they are. Uh, so I think from our side, as a IAB uh, Europe, it's all. Uh, thank you very much. And um, yeah, we have another webinar uh, tomorrow. So if you have any more questions or would like to find out a bit uh, more again about the new CMP uh, UI requirements, uh, please join us tomorrow. Okay, so thank you. Goodbye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.